Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing, as well as analysing, tech news, which as usual has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. With any luck, you're having an amazing day. We have an awful lot of news to get through in this video, although I do apologise for not being on camera for it. Unfortunately, I'm finishing some photography and it, things are just a little bit chaotic at the moment. And I will also quickly point out that the interview with Neil Trevitt is up today as well. I think it's pretty damn interesting. We go over features of the next generation consoles like the potential for hardware ray tracing, improved physics, what the new Vulkan API brings to the table, 1.2 specification, and a lot more besides. Basically, the future of computer graphics. So I'd encourage you to check it out if you would uh, like to learn about such things. I'll link it, of course, in the description of the video. Anywho, as I mentioned, there's a lot of stuff to get through today, and the first thing I'd really like to discuss is more of a public service announcement. And for those who are considering buying a Ryzen processor, I would highly suggest that you take stock haha, of the cooler which comes with your processor. Most likely this is only going to be a big deal outside of Europe and America, I'm assuming. Uh, this was originally reported on the website Ext Fastest, which is based in Asia. But long story short, there are non-genuine Wraith coolers which are doing the rounds. They actually have six heat pipes rather than four heat pipes of the genuine product, which is kind of amusing, but AMD are disavowing this and stating that they are essentially a knockoff, which are uh, pretending to be official products and that they are going to take action. You can read the quote yourself. It's not particularly of interest other than don't use this according to AMD. We've not verified the product. Now, realistically, I don't know if your processor is going to overheat, particularly if you are using, let's say, a 3600 processor but given AMD have not tested it, I probably would not take the risk if I am totally honest. I would be curious, though, to see how well it performs in terms of temperatures compared to the genuine product. I don't know, really, if a couple of extra heat pipes would make the difference. After all, there are lots of factors which uh, come into play when it comes to the effectiveness of a cooler. And heat pipes, great, but also what material is it being made out of? What are the tolerances it's being produced at? So on and so on and so on. And for all we know, it could be pretty good other than perhaps noisier. Or well, maybe it is actually better than AMD's product. Either way, this is one of those situations where it's not like buying a cooler from, let's say, Cooler Master or Arctic or um, Deep Cool or something like that, where obviously you can be pretty certain that plonking like a Deep Cool AIO on your Ryzen CPU is not going to cause it to go bang because, well, it's been. Uh, under the subject of a lot of R&D. At the end of the day, this is a knockoff. Whether you choose to use this or not, if you can manage to procure one, though, and you are willing to take the risk, do let me know about your temperatures. And now from AMD to several pieces of news from Sony and the PlayStation 5, the first thing I'd really like to discuss with you all concerns what people are reporting to be a leaked PlayStation 5 console, which has been uh, shown by a developer. Now, this video actually originally appeared on YouTube. It was uploaded yesterday, the 24th of January, and has amassed around 30,000 views already. It's doing the rounds pretty darn quickly. Um, and basically, the developer in the description of the video says that my team can't figure out the QR generation or the service seems... So the service is offline, please fix. So we could presume, if it's genuine, that the user would be forwarding this to Sony and they could figure out what's going on. That is, of course, once again, if it is genuine. However, I have several problems with this video. Um, lots of problems. The user themselves look like they are a developer based on the content on their channel, um, or at least they do work in the field of 3D graphics. But, as I said, I have several qualms with this video. The first of which is that at around the 24 second mark, you can clearly see the Google Play slash App Store thing pop up. Now, potentially you could say, well, that is just suggesting to people 
to download something via the App Store, or maybe it's a QR code, and there are parts of this that are blanked out. If you actually use a QR code reader, it takes you to what looks like set up PlayStation 5. So uh, PlayStation's own official website with basically set up PlayStation 5 in the URL. However, as of the time that I'm trying it, it doesn't work. Now that doesn't actually mean much. For those who are curious, it's actually really easy to create a fake QR code. It really is. You can literally just Google QR code generator and, well, you will find several websites which will help you do just that. The other problem I have with this is the console itself appears to say Toshiba on it. Um, plus the fact that just the boot-up sequence looks like it takes kind of long, and the logos themselves look a bit old as well. Am I saying that this is 110% fake? No, because at the end of the day, no one's really seen a retail-looking console before. Um, this certainly looks different to the development kits that we've seen, although this is being reported as a retail system. But I would be highly shocked if it is a genuine PlayStation 5. This video also seems to indicate that the console looks rather different from the 4chan leak. And while 4chan is not exactly a bastion of 100% accuracy, the rumour itself is not completely out of uh, the realms of potential possibility, and it also has the benefit of not having what looks like Toshiba written on it as well. Plus, the text on the boot-up of this console is questionable at best, and as I mentioned, the icons and so on look a bit suspicious. Indeed, the text itself that we see seems to reference QEMU, or Quick Emulator, which is a free open source emulator which provides um, hardware virtualization. Basically, virtual machines, which would be kind of odd that we see that on a PlayStation 5, uh, whether that's a retail console or a development kit. There is always the potential that this is some type of development kit, but even that doesn't seem to tally with me, because the development kits we've seen so far, with that V-shape, are very different to this, and some of those development kit photos are just from a couple of days ago, meaning that this developer would have had a development kit, which shipped just very recently, that hasn't been leaked anywhere else online in terms of its aesthetics, and then finally they would have put the video as basically viewable on their YouTube channel. It just doesn't quite tally up with me. My personal opinion is that this video is fake. Uh, the main reason I'm actually covering it, honestly, is because so many people tagged me on Twitter and I've actually received at least two or three emails, possibly more, by this point uh, of, after my recording. So I've wanted to cover it and just let you know that I don't think this is genuine. Active game is will take over, and obviously if you're running, let's say, the next Last of Us, that will be the game you're controlling. However, the other title will be in the background, essentially in hibernation and paused. But, currently a game invite with a current generation console works by you being in whatever game that you're playing, and then let's say your friend Bob invites you to play a multiplayer uh, game, this means it has to do a cold boot, so you would have to exit out the previous application to then load the other application. But this patent seems to describe things which happen a little bit differently. Basically, you will now be invited into a game, and that title will then launch in the background. It is essentially a background process, and then if you decide to join the game, that will switch to the forefront, while the title that you were playing then becomes a background process. You can see the flow of it here. It does mean, however, that this patent seems to confirm that the PlayStation 5 can basically run multiple instances of games, and it looks like the Xbox can do the same, so you can effectively jump in and out of experiences. So if you get kind of frustrated with a single-player game and you want to play a game of, let's say, Call of Duty for half an hour before jumping back into The Last of Us, you can absolutely do that, and it won't take you, like, five minutes to go from 
uh, a complete uh, reboot of the game. I would also be interested to see whether you can disable this feature, because it could potentially mean that you can have someone trolling you, several friends constantly sending invites, which potentially could mean that the experience could stutter. I would be interested to see if there's any frame rate drops as the new game loads. Um, I imagine not with the way that this is being implemented, given what Sony seems to be touting with this technology, but I would be curious to see if there was any momentary hiccups. And the final piece of news for today, and I'm not doing this alphabetically, is Intel, because the first working Tiger Lake U sample, which is running at 2.7 gigahertz, has been spotted on the internet. Rogue Game has actually done a nice comparison, pitting this against various other processes, including the Ryzen 7 3700U, an i7 1065G7, with its integrated GPU, and also the 10565G7 uh, with a GTX 1650 as well. All of these are with the best scores of those uh, various models. Judging from what's been discovered, it looks like Tiger Lake's clock frequency for the GPU has been locked at 2700 MHz. Although, of course, we can't exactly get official confirmation from Intel that, that that looks like what it is based upon the leaks we have. So, most likely, Intel are testing things such as stability or potentially mostly focused on the GPU side of the equation. Either way, given that this is running at 2700 MHz, the performance of the GPU is actually pretty impressive, and the CPU is not exactly a slouch either. I'm going to be fascinated to see over the next couple of years how Intel managed to come back. And actually, I have a video that I'm working on concerning Intel's upcoming uh, processor architectures. Uh, so if you would like to know more about that, definitely stick with me. Anyway, I think that just about covers it for this video. I know it's a bit shorter than normal, but those are the topics that really tickled my interest today. If you've enjoyed the video, the normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you've had an amazing day and continue to do so. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.